Ron Bittner is, well, not just the owner, right? Owner, founder, brain behind the entire operation of Bittner Vineyards. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Since uh, we planted the vineyard starting in 1981. Why? Why Why did you decide that? You know what I mean? Like, it's assumed you just do a vineyard, but why? What was that inspiration? What? Not even into the vineyard wine drinking thing. I found this property in 1979, bought it for the view. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I'd buy it for the, but the vineyards weren't here, right? None of that, none of that. 1979, Sims family was finishing up building San Chapelle. Okay. Uh, Dick Sims uh, was moving the family into planting vineyards out here. They're very diversified farmers, and I, I give full credit to Dick Sims, probably starting this wine industry in Idaho uh, with, with his earlier plantings. The first winemaker, Bill Broach for San Chapelle, was building his house same time I was, 1980. He came up here one day, and this was all tumbleweeds, all of it out through here, and, and weedy patches. And I was bemoaning the fact that, what am I going to do? I bought it for the view, but there's nothing here but weeds. And he explained to me that day on why I had a world-class site for Chardonnay. And I, I looked at Bill, and I said, that's cool, Bill, but what's Chardonnay? You know, because I... <laughs> what's Chardonnay? <laughs> not really into growing wine grapes yet, but he explained to me what it takes to have a world-class wine region in the world and uh, with wine grapes, especially here in Idaho because of our elevation, just under 2,700 feet, we are literally uh, high desert, high elevation vineyards. So we can have a cold frost late in the spring, early in the fall, you lose the leaves, you're not gonna make the fruit flavors you need to have in world-class wine grapes. And he said what happens out here uh, along the Snake River is you got the south facing slope, the cold air comes in, you start to you know, freeze hard in the valley by the middle of October, but uh, the cold air drifts away down to the Snake River, and uh, typically you won't lose your leaves until the end of October, which is true. So we started planting uh, Chardonnay and Riesling in 1981, along with that big block that the Sims family planted out there, and uh, have been having fun with it ever since. I I'm not a viticulturist. I knew nothing about wine. I loved growing the grapes. Uh, I am actually have a PhD in entomology. I'm a bee biologist. I've been a bee biologist for almost 40 years. But uh, working with bees, working in the vineyards, it's been awesome. Uh, 1995, I was working in Australia with bees. I, I got a phone call, left a message on my recorder there, and, and this voice on the other end said, this is, this is Greg Koenig, and I, I want to build a winery in Sunny Slope, Idaho. I want to make wine grapes out there. And... Uh, would love to visit with you about that. So uh, I got home in 1995, uh, went down, saw Greg, and he said he was building, going to build a winery, which he did at the end of the road there, and uh, wanted to buy wine grapes for me that year. And we started this long relationship of uh, 21 years together uh, out here on the slope. And we refer to Greg as our retirement plan because he started making <laughs> wines for us and, and has never made a bad wine. That's been fortunate for us. So in, in the major wine regions of the world, and especially here in the Northwest, people stay, still say wine, Idaho, made from potatoes. You know, yeah. we're in the first Muppet movie and they picked on us. After the break, Ron gives us a tour of his vineyard. Welcome back to Love Where You Live. I'm Travis Culver here in the beautiful wine region of Idaho. Now this region is known as Sunny Slope. It's actually still a part of the city of Caldwell, but it's an area of Idaho where individuals like Ron Bittner, who owns this vineyard that I'm in right now, are working feverishly and passionately to create wines that make Idaho a place second to none in the world for its signature red and white wines. So can you tell anything by looking at them, just visually, or do you need to taste them? Yeah. Yeah, they're going from a dark green. Once they start taking on this pale golden hue, like this, mm -hmm. uh, they're they're getting close just from the just from the Look colors. How little those are. Like, is that the is that the size they're going to be when you actually harvest? Yeah, you know, the, the, the workers will come along and they'll prune right up here. So, we do everything by hand for our grapes. Some grapes are machine harvested, but our workers know how to color sort, and they they'll leave the they won't pick these. I'll just pick the the nicest, you know full ripe grapes. So let me ask you another question about these two. This gives, I think, an idea what it takes to make a bottle of wine as well. 
Because I think you go to the store and you buy normal grapes. And you know, the normal grapes are like quarter size yeah. or whatever. And you think that's the same kind of grapes they're using to make wine, but it's not. No, most wine grapes are very small. Not all, not all of them, but you know, t taste one. So, you, uh, I mean, they're sweet, they're, but wine grapes have big seeds in them. So you have to you cut the juice it. off, but you're not gonna swallow them because of the, the seeds that are inside. But they get very sweet. Oh, they're delicious. They're absolutely delicious. And that's what makes wine. You're converting sunlight in through the leaves right. into sugar in the grapes. And then you... And then it goes to the winery. They're processed. You're adding a yeast that breaks down the sugars into alcohol. And then, so depending on the style of wine you want to make, you can have very high sugars, low alcohols, or you can have higher alcohols and low sugars in them. But uh, it's this whole process of, of converting sunlight into wine is why our region is unique, because there's no sunlight conversion without green leaves. Didn't have a clue in 1981, the difference between reds and whites. So, you know, You've learned a little bit in 30 I've learned, years. but it, I've also been very serendipitous in, in working with wine grapes, because I absolutely know nothing about them when I started. And I'm not a wine connoisseur. I, I know my wines. I know flavors. My wife has a better palate than me. She picks out all these nuanced flavors of black pepper and, and oh my uh, uh, but no, it's been fun. It's been a, it's been a ride for us, you know? Mm -hmm.